Hello friends, uh, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back. Um, I have tried to film this several times. Uh, I finally thought I was successful the other day, but then I realized the sound was off incorrectly, I should say, plugged in, and I was blurry the entire time. Now, to be fair, like, I can't see like without my glasses and even with my glasses, you're still very blurry. So we're just gonna roll with this and be aware that Dylan is over here and Gwen is in her playpen uh, making a lot of noise. And we're in my bedroom because the library does not get a lot of light, which is great for the health of my books, but not for filming. <laughs> um, so before the light disappears, I'm just gonna give you an overview of January. And we're gonna be very quick about this because while I read almost 20 books this month and 9,819 pages, I didn't actually read all, all things that really just blew me away, right? So we're going to give you a little highlights. So I had a really bad mental health month in general, so I read a lot of fluffy books. And so if you're looking for an escapist read and just are aware that, you know, Keep an eye out for books problematic elements with one of them the fandom super intense and they will tell you all of the problems with the books very upfront which is very intense but yay for them for being critical thinkers uh but like i started out the month with he who fights with monsters which is a serial publication of a lit rpg which is a story where the characters are aware they're in a video game um and it i read the first four volumes which was hours hours of content. I don't even know. I don't know. So I finished the last two volumes. The fifth volume comes out in the spring and it's interesting because it's a serial. It's sort of like a comic where they bind up the different issues. Well, this binds up the different chapters into volumes. So it's hundreds of chapters so far that I've read. I don't even know, but I really enjoy them. Uh, the, uh, the narrator is great. Uh, it's about Jason, who's a biracial Japanese Australian guy sucked into this other world where he, he's in a like a, a class in a specialization. So hard to say when you have a lisp like mine. Uh, and he has to kill monsters to level up. So I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. If you also play World of Warcraft or any other MMORPGs, you are also probably going to like this this book. I keep telling my friends to read it. None of them have. Welcome. Welcome to the life of a book lover. Um, but speaking of people trying to get people to read books that they love, my friend Amanda wanted me to read A Court of Thorn and Roses and the second one, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. Uh, I read both of those. In fact, I read all five of the books in that world, including the novella. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about this reading experience. It's very fast, very intense. I'm very exhausted uh, sometimes by how much fast the plot moves. But when you have a really bad mental health time, the, these are the kinds of books that I gravitate towards. Now, there are some problematic things about the books, like you have discussions of consent. Uh, the books are very white, especially in the beginning. They're very straight, especially in the beginning. But the fandom will tell you all of the problems and they will address it. Like, I am super impressed by this fandom because, like, I've always heard that Sarah J. Maas fans are, like, super intense and not in a good way, which it could be. I haven't seen instances of those, but I'm not really on young adult book booktube at all or any sort of bookish platform at all. Um, but I will say... But I will say, like, they will also tell you all the things wrong with them. So at least some of them are thinking critically, which is great. Like, uh, of course. Uh, so I really appreciate that. And now Amanda can now send me all of the A Court in Thorn and Roses fandom, like, TikToks that are out there, which are, there are many. There are many. Um, so yeah, that was basically the fluffy books that I read this month. Maybe I should do a series on all the fluffy books that I've read in the last two years including most of the Bridgerton books, but um, maybe another day. <laughs> um, I did read some backlist books, which I'll talk more about in my goals video, uh, but I read, um, I read, let's see, uh, I read Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge, No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, uh, Tokyo Uno Station by Yu Miri, and Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Um, all of these were fine. I, I would say like, I don't know, four star maybe, like if I did stars, they were, they were good, they were fine, they didn't like strike me as particularly like awesome um, per se. So I feel like I'm not in either of the camps. I've seen a lot of these books, like you either love it or hate it. 
Um, I think I like Liberty the best and I talk about that in my next video. Uh, but I did want to comment on the reviews of No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, particularly in mainstream like media reviews. I've seen them use language like, a tragedy happens to the family, a child is born with a fatal genetic condition. And that is ableist language. Uh, it is never a tragedy when a disabled person is born. That is not a tragedy that they exist. Now, the tragedy is that the child ha it has a fatal condition in the sense that, you know, she will die at a very young age. That is the tragedy. The fact that she is dying is the tragedy not that she was born. And I think that's really important. And to some people it might seem like a subtle difference, but I think uh, in particular, like uh, a lot of disability rights activists with Down syndrome have talked a lot about this, how their parents were like sent sympathy cards or like given sympathy at their birth. Oh, you had a child with Down syndrome? I'm so sorry. No, that's no. You say, congratulations, you had a baby. Like. I, I think that people who have genetic conditions of varying kinds have really spoken up about this and how it's a problem. So uh, just as a heads up, um, this is nothing to do with Patricia Lockwood and her writing in the book. This is obviously all about the reviewers, not Patricia Lockwood, but like, just keep an eye out when reading reviews. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, several different aspects of this book and the way it covers disability and how it impacts not just the disabled person, but the people around them. Um, and I understand what she's doing, et cetera, et cetera, but I have nothing new to add to this conversation so other than comment on reviewers. So those are those books. One of my favorite books was the New York Times book review, 125 Years of Literary History, which include all sorts of nerdy tidbits about when books first came out and the reviews that they had and the conversations that they started and so many different wonderful things in this book with an all-star narrated cast for the audiobook. I loved it. I wrote about it for um, Book Riot's audiobook newsletter and I will link that down below. I write it every week so you can go subscribe if you would like to read more about it. But um, I really love that book. And let's see, I read two memoirs. One was I really enjoyed and one was fine. Uh, I read The Storyteller by David Grohl. I was a little bit too young to have participated in the Nirvana fervor uh, when he really first came on the scene. Um, but uh, he really shies away from like delving into his emotional depths and how that affects his art. And maybe it's because I have way too high standards after reading Brandi Carlisle's uh, Broken, Horse Broken Horses, I think is her memoir where she sings on the memoir and goes really deep into her personal life and how that directly informs her art and her writing these songs. And David Grohl just talks about the famous people that he's met, the funny stories he has, and how much he loves his kids, and how weird he was as a child. There's really not a ton of emotional depth in regards to his art, and I feel like he really missed out on that. Conversely, I, I read uh, No Time Like the Future by Michael J. Fox, where he does talk about how his disability has affected his art. He you know, was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's, and he didn't tell people for a while, and he talks about having to come out as a disabled person, which as someone with a disability, I've had to experience over and over and over in my life. Like, there's never a time when I'm not coming out for one reason or another, and I'm just... I haven't read something like that before, and so I really appreciate the depth that Michael J. Fox had for his memoir, and he reads it. He talks about also having a tumor on his spine and having to do physical therapy. There are so many great things about this memoir, um, not to mention he performs the uh, memoir himself. Um, I also read The Bead Workers by Beth Piote, uh, which is for Erin Danny's book club, also known as the Indigenous Reading Circle. I'll link that book club down below and would recommend you participate. I really enjoy being part of the book club and they always have great picks. Um, I already have bought all the books for this year <laughs> um, and they have audiobooks for all but one of them, which is great. Um, I'm very excited. Um, and I also read um, Desperate by uh, Chris Mahler, which is about um, water in Appalachia. Um, I, I, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but like unions, environmentalism, and community care, which are three, which are considered progressive traits, are a huge part of Appalachian culture. 
uh, and history. And so I find this very interesting because I've read, you know, Chris Hamby's Soul Full of Coal Dust, which is about miners, which is about miners who have black lung who are seeking um, their disability benefits from coal companies. But this one looks at coal companies poisoning the water. Um, and this particular county is just, oh my word, they've had a lot going on. So I'm doing something with uh, Chris Maurer for um, Read Appalachia. So stay tuned. Um, so yeah, I have, those are the highlights of, of my month. I don't know what else to say. Uh, my light is disappearing as well. Um, I really want to have a better reading month next month. I don't care about the number of pages or number of books I read. I want to read the better quality, but um, overall, but also like my mental health is not just going to pick up and get better immediately. I think we have so much pressure on people to be productive and particularly as a disabled person with mental health problems, it's like it doesn't happen overnight at all. So trying to be kind to myself. I've been going more with the corgis to try to get Dylan out to exercise. Uh, hopefully he won't keep shredding his poor little hammy paw pad or whatever it's going on with him. But he loves to chase his ball, so yay for more activity. He wears a fit bark, which if you don't know what it is, that's a fit bark. But um, yeah, let me know if you want to follow him. I'll see if I can link it or something. I haven't quite figured out the app. The app is confusing. Anyway, Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time for a discussion of my bookish goals. All right. Bye friends.